We have been learning about the Indus River and the Indus River Valley Civilization, which are both located in the country India, shown in green here on our map. India is part of the continent Asia. We have also been talking about our key features of civilizations, or the things that are necessary for a civilization to form. Those things are cities, jobs, leaders, writing, and religion. Today we are going to talk about religion. We are going to talk about a religion that started in India and is the world's oldest religion. This religion is still practiced by thousands of people all over the world today. First, we're going to continue our map quest. We learned about how important the Indus River is. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about another very important river. This river is the Ganges River. Okay, when you open that PDF, again, it's going to be sideways. So we want to click on our menu up here, these three bars and rotate it clockwise. And that should get it right side up. Oh, didn't mean to do that. All right, yesterday we outlined ancient India, which of course includes modern day India and the country of Pakistan. We labeled the Indus River, the Himalayan mountains, and the ancient civilization Mohenjo-Daro. Today, we are going to add our other important river, I'm going to use the drawing tool and I'm going to, because it's a river, I'm going to also do blue. The Ganges River also flows down from the Himalayas all the way down till it lets out into the ocean. This river also flows from the Himalayas just like the Indus River. These two very important rivers came from this important mountain range. I'm going to have you jump onto your PDF and color in the Ganges River. We are also going to label it so we don't get it confused with the Indus River. I'm going to do that with a text box and set it right next to it. All right, that is it for our map quest today. Not a whole lot that we're adding today. Let's learn a little bit about this religion. We're going to learn about Hinduism. Hinduism. Hinduism is a religion that began in India. It is the third largest religion in the world. Existence. Existence means life. For example, Phoebe's dog was very spoiled and had a happy existence. Sacred. Sacred means holy or something that is used in the worship of God or gods. For example, Jerusalem is considered a sacred city in the Middle East. Represents. Represents means stands for or symbolizes. Each of the 50 stars on the US flag represents one of our 50 states. In music, musical notes on a page represent the note that the musician is supposed to play. The Statue of Liberty represents freedom. And the initials US represent United States. See if you can think of something that represents something else. This is the Ganges River in India. Like the Indus River, the Ganges flows down from the Himalayan mountains. Like the Indus, its fertile plain has long provided life to the people of India supplying water for their crops. Remember the word fertile means that things are able to grow there very well. But the Ganges has a much greater importance in the lives of many Indians. 
It is the sacred river of the Hindus. So if it's sacred, that means that it is considered holy in their religion. In fact, the Ganges is one of the most sacred places in all of India. It is the dream of Hindu people from all over the world to someday visit the Ganges and worship its sacred waters. Hindus is the name we give to people who practice Hinduism. In this picture, you can see Hindus gathering in the water to bathe in it, which they believe will wash away their sins or wrongdoings. Millions of Hindus make the trip every single year. Who are the Hindu people who worship the, Ga the Ganges? Hindus belong to the world's oldest religion, Hinduism. It is the third largest religion in the world and the most widely practiced religion in India. And Hindus, the people who practice Hinduism, live in many countries all over the world, including the United States. Unlike some religions that worship only one god, Hindus worship many gods and goddesses. In fact, their gods and goddesses, male and female, take many forms. For example, Hindus believe that the river Ganges is the earth home of Ganga, a river goddess. That is why the river is such a holy place. There are over 300 million gods and goddesses in Hinduism. Each of these gods and goddesses represents or stands for something that Hindus call Brahman. In Hinduism, Brahman is a spiritual force which Hindus believe is the source of all existence or life. Hindus believe everything comes from and is related to Brahman. All of the Hindu gods and goddesses represent Brahman, the source of all life. Of all of the gods and goddesses that represent Brahman, the three most important gods are known as Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. One of the other gods in this image, Ganesh, is another important Hindu god. Hindus believe that the god Brahma, not to be confused with the spiritual force Brahman, is the god of creation, the one who created heaven and earth, the moon and the sun, the planets and the stars, the whole universe. Everything and everyone is part of Brahma, the creator and god of wisdom. He is often painted or carved as he is in this picture, having four faces and four arms. Hindus believe the god Vishnu is the protector of the universe and the preserver of life. I want you to say that name with me, Vishnu. Ready? Vishnu. Vishnu is also portrayed with four arms. What other Hindu god had four arms? Brahma. In each hand, Vishnu holds Hindu symbols of the universe, including a club, a discus, a conch shell, and a lotus flower. The word club in this sentence means a heavy stick. The word club can also mean a group of people who meet to participate in an activity, such as a sport or a hobby. Hindus believe that it is Vishnu's job to keep order on earth, making sure that everyone and everything is safe. The third most important god in Hinduism, Shiva, is considered both a creator and a destroyer of the universe. He is often pictured as a dancer. All right, I want you to say that name with me too, Shiva. Ready? Shiva. Shiva is portrayed as a dancer to show that he is the source of all movement in the universe. A third eye in the center of his forehead is capable of shooting out fire. Shiva's powerful energy is believed to control nature. In fact, according to Hindu legend, Ganga, the river goddess, came to earth by way of Shiva's flowing, tangled mass of hair. Raging violently down from heaven, the river flowed through Shiva's hair, calming its waters before reaching earth. What do Hindus call Ganga's home on earth? 
the Ganges River. Thus, Hindus believe that Shiva, the destroyer, did indeed destroy the rage in the river's water and prevented greater destruction on earth. In the past, Brahma was worshipped by many. Today, Hindus mainly worship Shiva and Vishnu. Christians, Jews, and Muslims all worship a single god. Their religions each have one holy book. Hindus, on the other hand, have many gods and goddesses and have many sacred books. Most important among these books are the Vedas, which are sacred hymns and verses. The word Veda means knowledge. The most important collection of these verses is the Rig Veda. It is a very ancient book, over 3,000 years old. People who follow Hinduism, like many other religions, believe that people should be good and kind to one another here on earth. Hindus try to live their everyday lives by working hard, telling the truth, and doing their duty for friends and family. Duty is one's responsibility, doing what one knows is the right thing to do. The Hindus call this Dharma. So far we have learned that Hinduism is practiced widely in India and throughout the entire world. Hindus worship many gods and goddesses and believe that people should be good and kind to one another here on earth. Dharma, or duty, is tied to another important belief of Hinduism. Hindus believe that all creatures, humans and animals alike, have invisible parts called souls that continue to live after they die. Hindus also believe that these invisible parts are reincarnated or born again into the body of another person or animal on earth. The Hindu belief in soul's rebirth is called reincarnation. Hindus believe that those who fulfill their dharma or duty to others will be spared many cycles of reincarnation. They also believe that those who practice a good life on earth will be freed from life's troubles much sooner, becoming part of Brahman, what Hindus believe is the source of all existence, and at peace forever. All right, my friends, now that we are done with our read aloud, I have some questions about what we learned today. My first question is about the Himalayas. I want to know what two rivers flow from the Himalayas. We learned about one in a previous lesson and one we learned today. You've got it. It's the Indus River and the Ganges River. All right, today we learned about the religion, Hinduism. What do we call people who practice Hinduism? You've got it. We call them Hindus. People who practice Hinduism are Hindus. The Hindus believe that one of those two rivers we just talked about is sacred. Which of those two rivers do Hindus believe to be sacred? You are right. They believe the Ganges River is sacred. Why do they think that that river is sacred? Oh, you guys are too smart. You're right. They believe it is sacred because they believe that that is the home of the river goddess Ganga or Ganga. All right, my friends. Hindus believe in many gods, not just one god, but in many gods and goddesses. All of them together re represent something. What do they represent all when they all are together? I worded that funny, my friends. <laughs> what, what do all of the gods and goddesses represent? They represent Brahman, the spiritual force which Hindus believe is the source of all existence and life. All right, my friends, there are some holy texts or books in Hinduism. 
What were those books called? See if you remember, what was the name that was given to those books? Sorry, I'm moving around a lot. You guys have got it. Those books are called Vedas. And the most important of them is called the Rig Veda. All right, my last question. I want you to turn to your friend, neighbor, whoever's there with you, and talk about this one for a minute. How is Hinduism similar to other religions that you know about? And how is it different? Maybe think about your own religion if you practice a religion. How is Hinduism similar and how is it different? my friends we're going to go back to our Indian early Indian civilization chart that we made in our last lesson we talked about how cities are an important part of civilization like Mohenjo-daro we talked about how important jobs are in civilizations we've got our picture of dates here because dates were an important crop in Mohenjo-daro and farming is an important job we also talked about how writing is important so that people can communicate with each other and share important information. This is a picture of early Indian writing. Today, we talked about our bottom rectangle. Today, we talked about religion. The religion that we talked about today that was widely practiced in ancient India is Hinduism. Hinduism believes in multiple gods and goddesses. Our four most important gods are shown on this picture. We have Ganesh and Brahma and Vishnu, oops, sorry, that's crooked, and Shiva. These were our, the four most important gods in the Hindu religion. I'm going to put this so we remember how important religion is to ancient civilizations. I'm going to put this on, under our religion column. There we go, we've got just a few blank spaces left on that chart. We'll, we will fill them out in our next couple of lessons. There is one more thing I want you to do for this lesson, my friends. Go ahead and open up the PDF that is attached to this assignment. And I'm gonna jump over to my computer so I can show you what you're, we're going to do with that assignment. All right, my friends, today we learned about the religion, Hinduism. A little bit later, we'll be learning about a different religion called Buddhism. We are going to use this chart to compare and contrast Hinduism and Buddhism. So we're going to talk about how they're similar and how they're different. Down the side of this chart, there are a bunch of different characteristics listed. The number of gods, the name of followers. We're going to fill them out for both religions so we can compare them and see where, how they are similar and how they are different. We haven't learned about Buddhism yet, so today we are only going to fill out the Hinduism side of the chart. All right, let's start with our very first one. We're going to want to use the text box tool for this assignment. How many gods are there in Hinduism? Do we have an exact number? No, we just know that there are many, many, many gods and goddesses. I'm going to write many in my chart. What about followers? What do we call followers of Hinduism? We call them Hindus, you are right. What about the name of their holy texts or books? 
What is the name of the most holy book to Hindus? Ooh, I'm impressed with your memory, friends. You are right. It is the Rig Veda. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. What is the holy place in Hinduism? What place do they believe to be sacred or holy? You've got it. It is the Ganges River. I didn't capitalize. There we go. The Ganges River is a sacred or holy place to them. What about important figures? We learned about four important figures today. Well, three mostly. We mentioned one, but we learned about three in more detail today. Three important figures in Hinduism. They were our three most important gods. Let's see if you remember their name, names. One of them was Shiva. We also talked about Brahma and about Vishnu. We learned about all three today. We did mention Ganesh, but we didn't really talk about Ganesh. I'm going to move him down so we can fit all of them. All right, my friends, our very last one is an interesting fact. So on this one, I just want you to tell me something that you found interesting about Hinduism. What's something that you thought was interesting that we learned about Hinduism today? When you have filled out this chart with your interesting fact and all of the other ones that I helped you with, you will turn it in up at the top. And that is your last thing to do for knowledge today. Thank you friends, we'll see you next time.